Bionic's latest EV deep six the competition. <laughs> uh, I'm Jay. I'm Seth. And this is Modern Motor. Today we are rolling along in near silence in the 2023 Ionic 6. Another EV mm -hmm. for Hyundai. We'll start with the outside because it's the most recognizable, it gets the most amount of looks and mm -hmm. comments. I see old school Infinity. Hmm. Just the one. Uh, I believe it's the, the J35. Okay. Um, just very spaceship-like and way ahead of its time. Mm. Um, but I see that here. And you have that nice long curve uh, going all the way from the front to the rear. You've got the double spoiler. But up front, I see a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit of the Tiburon. Mm -hmm. Second generation, not that bubbly mess that they put out. <laughs> One thing that stands out up front are the amber DRLs. Mm. It's interesting because Kia killed theirs for the mid-cycle refresh, and the Ionic 6 has it. It's an interesting blend between lots of smooth lines and parametric pixels. I'm going to stumble on that word the entire <laughs> review so I could say at least I got it out once. I love that Ionic has gone with this pixel theme as sort of their characteristic design element for, it, th throughout their vehicles. Up front, it's such a cool look. You do have active grill shutters, and mm. I don't think I should call it that. That's what the website says, but I feel that active air flaps mm. are better because it's not really a grill Nobody likes the word flap. <laughs> well, I guess nobody wins. And the cool thing about that is Hyundai's made it even more aerodynamic. Mm -hmm. So there are air curtains at the edges of the front end. Coefficient of drag is 0.22, which is ridiculously low, like an extremely good number. And the air flaps contribute to that, but so does that shoulder line. It really mm. takes a big dive toward the end, which is a look I think that people are going to find hard to get used to, but it's functional. I would love to nerd out over some <laughs> wind tunnel testing for those double spoilers, actually, to see the difference it makes. Interestingly, because the spoiler is mounted so high, you'd expect it to impact your rear visibility. Mm. Nope, not, not at, all. at all. We have 20 inch rims because we have the ultimate package spec on this. And they look great, mm. but they just take a massive bite out of your range. Yeah. I like the way the rims look. If I didn't care about range and I was okay with the lower figure, I would absolutely take them. So if you're shopping for an EV for the first time, big flashing billboard, pay attention to your wheel size because you're going to have to think about it more in EVs than you are used to. Yeah. Now going along the side, it's got the flush door handles and it's got the proximity alert. So you just reach your hand out when the key's in your pocket or your purse and out it comes and it's great. And it's got the backup uh, as far as a manual opening goes. Uh, and they're on the rear again, it looks so sharp and the tailgate opens quite a bit. Mm. It's uh, not a compromised opening, so you can still get a lot of stuff in there. It's a strong stance to take to just decide that you're not going to be for everyone. And, and that's fine. And it's an interesting contrast to the Ionic 5 which has sharp angles all over the place mm -hmm. to this. Can you put things like a trailer hitch installed bike rack on the back of one of these? Mm. The answer is no, because mm. the overhang's too long. Mm -hmm. And You can't roof mount them either. No. So something to keep in mind, your, your accessory availability on this is limited. Last touch on the outside, there is a little frunk, and it's only got 14 and a half liters of cargo space. It's not useful for very much of anything. I think it puts something uh, in there. The, I don't really know it's not even big enough need. for a backpack, so. And find the smallest thing that you don't want on the inside. <laughs> yeah. And then around the rear, uh, you get 316 liters of cargo space. Not the biggest in class. No. But the rear seats go down, so you get a little extra space in there. But the thing is that it's not very tall, but it is quite deep, that cargo space. Right. Turning to the inside now, I love this interior. Most of me does. Yeah. Let's go through the obvious things. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you sit down, you'll see the pair of 12.3 inch screens. It's mm -hmm. nothing new as far as the Ionic lineup goes. Well, there's only one other Ionic right now, but you'll see it in other Hyundai and Kia models. It's pretty easy to use like every other infotainment system. I uh, still have a weird issue with the dashboard. I can't see all of it the way my steering wheel is. Mm. And the only way to get a heads up display, which is extremely helpful, is to go for the all-wheel drive and get the ultimate package. And then you're getting the 20-inch wheels that you might not want. I'll start with the steering wheel. When you put it into reverse, those four little squares of parametric pixels 
uh, which is Morse code for H, mm -hmm. go from blue to pink. I love that they've activated this and not just left it blank like the Ionic 5. Did you notice that it changes colors when you change the drive modes too? I did, and it changes colors when you use the voice controls. It's thin, it's comfortable, the full wheel is heated, all of your controls are on there, your drive modes are on there, which mm -hmm. I think is the best place to put it because your hands are always on the wheel. Let's get to the weird stuff. Mm -hmm the window switches and the door locks. Yeah, that is weird. I've never, I mean, that's kind of a Jeep thing to put your window switches in the middle, but I, and I've never been a fan, but I think maybe it's something you get used to over time. I think the trade-off is good if mm. you're into design, mm -hmm. because these door panels are so they smooth are and clear. gorgeous. And there's, uh, hopefully the microphone picks it up. <laughs> it's ridged. Like it's, it's, it's really sharp and there's big speaker covers mm -hmm. all across. Uh, the handle of the door. Let's talk about the dashboard. Mm -hmm. I put up a little YouTube short and Instagram, whatever the vertical thing is, yeah. and I called it these little curvy things. And someone said the European spec versions of these have the digital side view mirrors. Yeah. I confirmed with Hyundai Canada because it didn't even occur to me. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yep, that's exactly what it's there for. And it's, it's like the wings of an airplane. Wings just, is exactly <laughs> how I described it in my mind. That's the only element of the front of this car that I don't like design-wise. Why not? I don't know. It feels like everything else is so geared toward a feeling of expansion and, mm. and mo motion. And then it's like this stop. Quick touch on the HVAC system. I generally like it. Mm -hmm. Capacitive touch buttons are functional. They're usable wouldn't mind a couple of physical touch buttons like they have for your uh, menu. They have uh, map, navigation, media, favorites, and tune, but... That's fair, but at least everything's there and you can see it and mm -hmm. easily access it. But here's what does drive me crazy is, mm -hmm. if I hit this little panel down here to get to the heated seats, mm -hmm. then the control comes up on the screen. I can set it to the temperature I want, but I don't, it, when I hit the back button, it doesn't go back to the screen that I was on. It goes back to oh, the home screen. screen. Now, if you do opt for the Altamont package, you get the 64 color ambient lights that mm -hmm. split from top to bottom. So you get a real nice atmospheric feel as opposed to just having one color for your ambient lights. In the middle of the console, you have your USB port, you have your wireless charger, you have a ton of parametric pixels. <laughs> Surprised I haven't messed that word up yet. And a couple of cup holders and your window switches. Uh, decent amount of storage mm -hmm. in the uh, center console, which is and pretty nice. Underneath as well, which All is that. really nice for throwing a purse no. or something. Or something even larger. A standard digital dashboard. Mm -hmm. I know some uh, offerings only on the top trim do you get the digital side and the rest of it's half and half. Mm -hmm. But regardless of what trim you get, there's only two trims here, the uh, rear wheel drive and all wheel drive, mm -hmm. you get both digital uh, screens. Now the gear selector, I, I don't mind it. I don't like it because it's new. You know what I've realized bothers me the most about it? Mm. Reverse should be away. But drive is away. Uh, see, I see it as I'm turning it forward, like I'm turning a key forward and I'm moving myself forward. So the whole motion of going to drive just makes me feel like I'm going this way. I understand why you'd think that and, and that makes sense to me, but every car reverses either, like Four, you, right. you're pushing that way either because it's a manual or because that's just how mm. this gear selector is set up. Sunroof is only on the ultimate package, mm -hmm. but it's a light interior, so mm -hmm. I take it. No, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd take it because I'd lose a bunch of range because that <laughs> ultimate package comes with the 20-inch wheels. I wonder if you can get the ultimate package and just ask to <laughs> delete the 20-inch wheels. My only complaint here is the audio system. It's the upgraded Bose one because it comes with the ultimate package, which is what we have. Mm -hmm. No matter what settings I adjusted on my phone or on the system itself, I couldn't get a decent sound. And it felt like if you're wearing headphones, somebody put dryer sheets on there. Just it's muffled and it's it's distant. And I don't know how to fix it. Maybe it's just me. Audio is a very subjective thing. All right, Jay's getting ready to get on the highway. I would encourage you to put it in it sport mode. Already. And is. put on the EV sounds. Let's hear that. Woo! <laughs> it's. Anyway, nobody's gonna be able to hear me if we leave that on. All right, so we have a single motor and a dual motor. Yes, so 
which equates to rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. In the rear wheel drive version, you have 225 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque. If you opt for the all wheel drive version, then you're getting an extra motor at the back and that adds some power. So you get a total, some power, some power <laughs> bit of power. So that brings your total to 320 horsepower and 446 pound feet of torque. Nearly double the torque. Mm -hmm. that makes sense, two motors. Yeah. Now, I think that it's plenty of power. Mm -hmm. We haven't driven the single motor version, but I feel it would be completely fine. It, it might be, but I think a lot of Canadians especially are still going to opt for the all-wheel drive just to have all-wheel drive and more control. Another important number that we have to talk about is range because it is affected based on what decisions you make about, mm -hmm. first of all, rear-wheel drive versus all-wheel drive. In the rear-wheel drive version, you have 581 kilometers. That's right. Tesla territory. If you opt for the all-wheel drive, as many northern drivers will, then you still have 509 kilometers of range with the 18-inch wheels. More than 500 has a lot of people feeling pretty happy. Yep, because it matches up with uh, what a traditional gas vehicle would yep. do. Now, let's get to the... Ultimate package on the 20-inch wheels. Yes, in that case, you're down to 435 kilometers. Still impressive, but that's a big hit. That's, Especially from that rear wheel drive number. That's almost 150. I think I'd go rear wheel drive a top quality set of winter tires mm. because almost 600 kilometers on a single charge. I'm pretty happy with 509. I think I could very easily live with that. If you happen to be able to find a 350 kilowatt fast charger somewhere near you. That number is insane. Yeah. 18 minutes. Zero, it's, what is it? 10 to 80 in 18 minutes. Yes. Very yep. important that it is 10 to 80 yes. for a level three for the numbers that we were given by Hyundai Canada. Mm -hmm. And on a 50 kilowatt, it is... 73 see, minutes. I was going to say that. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. It did down to level two and the 10 to 100% charge is six hours 55 minutes okay. so you're overnight basically and it's got a 10.9 kilowatt onboard charger in this which is great and then there's the v2l which is only part of the ultimate package so the in the interior v2l yeah. where the, there's an outlet between the rear seats is part of the ultimate package you can get an accessory that plugs into the charging port on the outside that would work in any trim as this is an ev you have different levels of region there are four specific levels zero one two three and your full eye pedal, which I know you like. I do. I still don't like it. I'm starting to come around to the idea though that it might sometimes be more efficient to use it in level zero and then do the braking. Oh, who would have ever, <laughs> ever told you <laughs> that? That was never about efficiency for you. You just don't like the feel of, of one pedal braking. Call it what you want. <laughs> I don't care. The eye pedal is useful for stop and go traffic. Oh, absolutely. But if you're cruising down a rural road, you don't want that drag, right? Because right. that will burn more range than what you're going to gain because you're not doing any braking. So. Right. As far as ride and handling goes, handling is excellent. Mm. Ride is a little bit rough. There was a great example right there, I find. <laughs> Do you think that's 20 inch wheels? Could be. No, I don't think so, actually. No? No, I think it's maybe the suspension is little stiff. If you do opt for the ultimate package, you get a 360 cam as well. So if you are one of those drivers that maybe need a little extra set of eyes behind you and around you for parking, then that's the option. So it's not a big twisty turny road, Ron, but it's got some bends to it. Mm -hmm. And because it's so low to the ground and the aerodynamics are so great, there's not really a lot of body roll. No. But I find it really just sits and stays and the steering responsiveness is pretty good. So you can see my hands, you can see part of my arms. So there's, sorry if I made you. Yeah, no, that's actually is completely fine. And a lot of that has to do with the battery being mounted underneath, keeping it really nice and planted. Checking out the rear seat now in the Ionic 6, and we didn't think I was gonna fit because I have a very tall torso, but actually my hand clears between my head and the headliner just fine. Sometimes my hair is dragging against it a tiny bit in a way that's sort of annoying, but I have enough space, especially if I sort of let myself sink down comfortably into the seat. Heated rear seats available on this with the ultimate package here. Um, two cup holders here, two in the doors, and lots of nice little storage cubbies. There's an extra little shelf in the door handle here, as well as a small little one down by the, in the back of the center console with two USB-C ports. Another nice feature is that there's no column in the rear seat here, so you can clear way, both sides very easily without anything getting in the way. This has the ultimate package, and so it has the V2L system, which is positioned right here between the two back seats. 
and as you can see, tons, tons of legroom. This seat is all the way back, so very comfortable space for four adults here. So we've got the same height overall, but we have different body shapes. So my head space is a lot more because my upper body is a lot shorter. I still have a lot of leg room, but my feet are actually underneath. Still good, still comfortable, but people ask us, well, what's the back space like? Because the roof is slanted and it depends on how tall your upper body is. So Steph had no problem. I think her hair was a little bit on the connection side with the roof liner. That's a weird way to say it, but whatever. But uh, as you can see, I could put a fist between my head and the roof liner and I've got no issues at all. Uh, your standard safety includes forward collision alert, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, lane follow assist, driver attention warning, highway drive assist one, because there is a two that comes with the ultimate package <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, high beam assist. So if you want to sacrifice 74 kilometers of range mm -hmm. and put up 6,000 bucks for the ultimate package, I can't memorize it all, it's not a sheet. Mm -hmm. You get your 20 inch wheels, a sunroof. Mm -hmm. This one. Good things, power passenger seat with lumbar support. Mm -hmm. Driver memory seat, pretty handy if you have two drivers. Mm -hmm. 64 color ambient light, heads up display, vehicle to load, highway drive assist two, smart park two. I haven't heard about smart park since that commercial for smart the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, you get a 360 camera blind view monitor, which is the thing that shows up in your dashboard, and your ventilated seats. Mm -hmm. Right, so Hyundai says they're going up against the Polestar 2 mm. primarily and the Tesla Model 3. Okay. Tesla Model 3, rear-wheel drive, 438 kilometers of range, or the Performance, which is 507 kilometers of range, 72.9, 54.9 if you go for the rear-wheel drive with 438 kilometers on a single motor. Mm -hmm. Polestar 2, it's close, but I, I think you decide 418 kilometers of range off a dual motor all-wheel drive and 434 kilometers off a single motor front wheel drive it's a small gap and it's 53.9 versus 58.9 the higher number being all-wheel drive polestar 2 is a little bit tighter than this on the interior mm. higher quality materials though so here's the one i think that's the closest yeah well i think it's the i4 yeah I absolutely think it's the i4. An i4 is a wonderful car. It won mm -hmm. Ajax Car of the Year and it won Ajax uh, EV of the Year. Yeah. So the eDrive 40 gets you 484 kilometers of range. Mm -hmm. Where the Ionic 6 wins is almost 600 kilometers of range. The E35 gets you 418. 484 kilometers of range is 64 and a half. The 418 yep. is 58 and a bit. And your M50 is over 80,000. That in the middle I-4 is a pretty no. good I know. But here's place the, to be. A rear wheel drive, 54,999. We'll call it 55. Mm -hmm. That tiny little jump of $3,000 gets you the all wheel drive, dual motor, double the, almost double the torque. Mm -hmm. And then you throw the ultimate package on to the 57,999, which turns into 63,999, which is 64. I think you're getting much more car here than you are in the competition that we outline. Just to clarify, because it's different in Canada now than it is in the US. Mm -hmm. In Canada, we still get rebates for cars like this. In the US, the tax credit no longer applies for EVs that are not built in North America. So mm -hmm. neither this, nor the i4, nor the Polestar 2 would get you a tax credit. Not yet, but I'm sure everything's going to start being built th here for that. Uh, which is the purpose of the thing. But yes, yeah. so for now, though, that's not a factor for you in the US. But here in Canada, everything that we're talking about here in this competitive set qualifies for the federal rebates and provincial rebates where they exist. For me, it's a really tough decision between this and the middle of the road i4. Really tough. Because I, I love the design on the i4. And Have you seen this? Yeah, it's, but I, I don't know. It might be a little bit, I, I like the interior a lot. This bothers me. Oh, I don't know why it, it bothers me just, so much. It's too, it's too, <laughs> look, it's two pieces. You don't like it, just snap it off. But also the infotainment in the BMW is a lot mm. more pleasant to use, I find. And so the, it would be a really, really tough call. What might swing me in this direction is more interior space, yeah. more range, better price. So those are the factors to weigh if you're looking at this. And also BMW is a premium badge and Ionic is not considered that. So that could be something that could factor into it for mm. some people as well.
Thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please hit that button below that lets you subscribe so you don't miss any more of our reviews. You can find us on all the major social media platforms as well, where you can leave us your questions and your comments. And we love hearing from you. So please reach out and thanks for watching.